Hi, I'm Joanna Ardo. Um, my film is called The Feeling That the Time for Doing Something Has Passed. Um, it's a mosaic style comedy following the life of a woman as time goes by in her long-term casual BDSM relationship, low-level corporate job, and quarrelsome Jewish family. The first film that I acted in of my own was uh, Bad at Dancing. Um, it was also a story that, while not autobiographical, drew on some personal experience. So it felt like I would be a good fit for that. And um, with that film, I started developing kind of a self-deprecating deadpan humor style that I continued further in this one. Um, I collaborated with my acting coach, Han Park, both on Bad at Dancing. And Han is a close friend who also was in um, my acting class that I studied in for a few years. And so it was great to work with them. Um, we did rehearsals before the film and then also with some other actors and Han, and then additionally Essie Casey, another friend, was a pair of eyes on set for this one to reflect back what, what they were seeing, um, even though I was also getting a sense while acting in the scenes too and watching some takes back myself. I've always been interested in concise humor and wanted to push further with that idea in this one. Um, and so I wrote as many short scenes as I could, drawing on personal experience, things that were currently happening, things that were happening in the past. Um, and, and yeah, I was really interested in the everyday way that people talk and its humor um, and kind of wrote this wanting to celebrate in some ways the comedy and uh, complexity of just mundane life. Um, I wrote it in 2019 is when I began, and then we started shooting in 2022, so. Yeah. In this film, I wanted to create a pretty complex uh, picture of this woman's life um, and show how the entirety of her experience informs who she is. Um, I was also just interested in, like, I, I feel like our days are such a jumble of experiences, our years are such a jumble of experiences when you shake it up. It's kind of just strange to, and exciting in some ways to see what comes out. Um, and I feel like there was similar threads throughout all the, the work, uh, family, and relationship, and sexual plot lines about, you know, communication challenges of navigating relationships and um, yeah, a power dynamics that uh, sometimes I was interested in exploring how they worked in contrast to each other and sometimes interested in drawing similarities. I mean, I think that submission is one of the most active acts that anyone can really do. Uh, sometimes I get questions about why the character doesn't have agency and I'm always totally surprised and blown away because uh, I think that submission is, you know, one of the most powerful acts that someone can do. It involves a lot of communication um, and, uh, y yeah, uh, planning to make something like that happen. So. In, in this film, I wanted to take care to show act Anne as an active character um, in the planning of the sessions to, um, to counter those kind of misconceptions about BDSM. Um, yeah. I was really interested in exploring that gray area between intimacy and uh, a more casual relationship and what it kind of looks like when people are negotiating rules or trying new things. I kind of feel like that's a ripe area for comedy and um, also just interesting, complex emotional stories. Um, 
I, I, don't know, I like writing dialogue. I began working with a personal experience in my films with my personal documentary, I Hate Myself Smiley Face. And I got started making that film because my then boyfriend and I at the time got into an argument off camera uh, that accidentally got recorded when I was filming his open mic. Uh, and after a few days, I listened back to that like argument on that was recorded and I thought it was so funny with a few days. It's just like amazing how sometimes whatever's happening in your life, even if it's, you know, boring or, I mean, not everything, some things aren't funny, but often you can step back with some distance and really find the humor in it. So I feel like that was one of the films where I began to realize that it was exciting to mine specific and vulnerable experience for humor. I like to make work that is personal, that does draw heavily on my own experience, um, but I also like the freedom to fictionalize, and um, and I feel like narrative automatically, you change so, so much with some elements getting amplified and some minimized. Um, so to me, autofiction acknowledges that this is an, an autobiographical work, but um, also at the same time acknowledges that there are these elements with uh, uh, me playing a version of myself, my parents playing a version of themselves. Clearly I went to Wesleyan, uh, some, some things you can fact check on this. Uh, so I, I definitely don't wanna hide anything about what I'm doing and I, I am very much you know, excited about the ways that it's uh, personal and specific and you know, hope that that's something that makes others connect with it and ring true. Right before I wrote this, I started uh, reading a collection of stories by Carmen Maria Machado, and uh, I just was so excited about uh, the vignette-based form in those stories. That was one of the reasons I um, you know, became excited about experimenting with a new form and inventing a language that felt right for the story that I was trying to tell. One influence for my work is uh, the work of filmmaker Simon Leung. I really am excited about his long take, long shot style, and the way that uh, he creates a sort of absurd cinematic universe with this uh, um, style and, and gives viewers room to engage with it on their own terms. Um, it's also kind of a, a dissonant tone, which I hope my work is as well in many ways. I'm interested in depicting sexuality and uh, relationships in my films because, I mean, I think it's a exciting topic and there's a lot to explore and unpack. Um, I think that the way bodies move is so uh, idiosyncratic, says so much about people and uh, the vulnerability involved, uh, the uh, the sense of people figuring something out and, and in communication as well, they're all things that I think are, you know, ripe for comedy. In terms of the portrayal of sexuality, um, I like to portray it in a long shot, long take style that emphasizes the absurd context of the situations. Um, I don't see m my films as uh, subversive or provocative really because you know I think sexuality is pretty common for people <laughs> I would say and uh, and BDSM and BDSM type dynamics are as well so um, the, the portrayal is really intended to show what's integral and essential to the story in a comedic and non-sensational way um, I do think that it's a subversive film in terms of its narrative structure. Um, I see it as uh, subverting some elements of uh, the three-act structure in, in terms of that the change that the character does go through is small and uneven in nature, if it even happens at all. I 
I personally haven't seen very many films that reflect the submissive experience or BDSM in a way that feels um, authentic. So I hope that in its own small way, this film contributes to their representation. Well, we shot a lot more than is in the film and potentially I'll come back and edit another feature out of what I wasn't able to use because, uh, you know, we were excited to make this as rich of a mosaic with as many strands and neighborhoods and different walks of life included in, um, in the story. Um, so I think, you know, the first uh, assembly of the film was four hours um, just without, you know, just putting it all together, not uh, editing it down. And we ended up with an 87 minute cut. So definitely uh, refining uh, it. I, I wanted to leave audiences wanting more. So even though I definitely missed some of the things I cut, um, I, I didn't want the takeaway for people to be, I wish it was shorter. <laughs> We had a lot of rough cut screenings in the edit process. Um, I think it's important when, especially for me editing um, a film that I'm acting in, a story I wrote, to get some outside perspective of how it's working for other people and, um, and have a chance to refine the comedy and the timing of it. Uh, so I definitely was n noticing where people were laughing and weren't laughing uh, as I approached the edit. Um, I think one thing that I was surprised by in the edit process was that people are less tolerant of repetition as I expected. And so uh, there, there used to be a, a lot more uh, scenes that uh, expanded on a certain motif. So I was sad to lose those, but uh, you know, people feel once you've hit a certain beat, you know, they don't want to come back to it. So that was an interesting discovery there. I grew up in Brooklyn and have lived there pretty much all of my life. So I feel like, you know, it's very tied into my experience, which is also tied into the film. So um, in some ways it, it could have been a film that took place anywhere, but because it's such a personal film, I like, you know, there's some references of specific highways in uh, Brooklyn <laughs> mentioned and, and things like that, that in some ways the local uh, feeling of it and heart is, is uh, what's attached. You also see the Statue of Liberty, very small in one shot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was very important to me and the producing team to make sure that this was a safe and respectful environment for everyone, including myself. Um, so we uh, spoke to everyone about their comfort level, um, had rehearsals where we blocked things out ahead of time, um, checked in frequently, reminded everyone that they were free to change their mind at any time about anything that was going on, and made sure to follow standard uh, set protocol with closed sets and uh, all the uh, garments and uh, intimacy procedures that are typical. All of the actors um, knew it was an auto-fictional film in some senses and we talked a lot about the inspiration and um, they were all such generous actors. I was really lucky to work with them. Um, the sense of comedy and complexity that they all brought was was quite exciting uh, from Bob Ack, Scott, Alicia, just uh, all of them. Um. Um, well, in terms of the deadpan acting style, it's one that I developed in my previous uh, short films and wanted to expand on that further. Um, and it's also one that I thought made sense for this character in this story where uh, she's a character who's kind of figuring out what she wants in terms of relationships, sexuality, and 
um, how she herself feels about these things. So I think uh, there's, there's a certain sense that expression and uh, self-awareness is also one of the things being worked out. Um,